Propaganda is a powerful tool. It's used all the time by governments, by businesses. Well, when businesses use it, they call it marketing. <laughs> but it's an especially effective tool in wartime. And it was used by both sides, the Americans and the British, in America's War for Independence. My name is Ron Ecclebarger, and we are going to examine in this video how one woman's death became a powerful propaganda tool for the American patriots and has even influenced American art and literature. The lady's name is Jane McCrae. Jane was born in 1752 in Somerset County, New Jersey to James McCrae and Mary Graham McCrae, who were Scottish immigrants. Now, according to George Duffield, her father served as the Presbyterian minister in Somerset County, New Jersey for 26 years until his death in 1769. In 1777, Jane was engaged to a young man named David Jones. David Jones was a young officer in the British Army of General John Burgoyne. <laughs> General John Burgoyne, or Gentleman Johnny, as he was known because of his flamboyance, heavy gambling, and very strong presence in English society, it was a very interesting fellow. He was able to convince King George III to sign off on his plan to invade the colonies from Canada. Willard Randall writes in his article, Burgoyne's Big Fail, quote, Burgoyne would combine heavy artillery with savages and light forces to force the Americans to retreat. Although Burgoyne was reluctant to use Native Americans to fight the colonists, the king insisted on it. He also told Burgoyne to take and hold Lake George. Of paramount importance, the king stressed, was that the force from Canada must join Howe at Albany, unquote. Burgoyne was successful in marching down out of Canada and retaking Fort Ticonderoga in New York and marching all the way south to Saratoga. This map that you see shows the invasion route. It's from Randall's article. On July 17th, 1777, Jane McRae's story intersects with this invasion. In the book, Women in American History, Kathleen Barker says that Jane was visiting a friend of hers at Fort Edward. Other sources say that she was on her way to reunite with her fiancé. While Willard Randall says that David Jones lived on a farm near Fort Edward and that he had sent a group of Indians to bring Jane to Burgoyne's camp. Well, whatever the reason for her travel, she did end up in the hands of a group of Indians. Again, the details of what happened differ. To quote Barker, One version claims that her captors argued over who would take credit for seizing her and therefore earn a reward for delivering her to her fiancé and that she was murdered as they attempted to settle the dispute. A different account reports that McRae was accidentally shot by Americans who were aiming for the Native Americans, unquote. Now, the end result was the same. Jane was killed. And an Indian named Wyandot Panther scalped her and brought her hair into Burgoyne's camp in order to receive the reward that the general had promised for any American scalps. Well, Burgoyne was furious that a white woman had been scalped and he wanted to punish the Indian, but he couldn't, as his junior officers pointed out, if he did punish one Indian, all of the other Indians would get upset and leave the British cause. So no one was punished for Jane's murder. 
The irony of the story, though, is this. Even though Jane McCrae was a loyalist and was engaged to a British officer, she became the poster child for the rebel cause. Colonial newspapers quickly picked up and embellished the story of Jane's massacre to paint the English as brutal to women and children American General Horatio Gates sent a letter to Burgoyne in September of 1777 accusing him of hiring murderers to murder women in their wedding dresses. Well, in spite of differing reports of exactly what happened to Jane, historians do agree on the result, and that was that the propaganda benefit to the American cause was immense, both in recruiting soldiers and in bolstering the morale of those soldiers and the citizens. To top it all off, American generals Horatio Gates and the future trader Benedict Arnold defeated Burgoyne at the Battle of Saratoga. Now, Jane McRae's influence lasted well beyond the American War for Independence. Her death was the basis for a character named Lucinda in a portion of the epic poem, The Columbiad, by Joel Barlow, which he wrote in 1807. She was the subject of numerous paintings, which you've been seeing these paintings and the credits for them as we have been talking about Jane. One of the most famous was John Vanderlyn's painting the death of Jane McRae, which he painted in 1804. She is even said to be the inspiration for part of James Fenimore Cooper's classic, The Last of the Mohicans. One final piece of ironic marketing to consider is that in 1901, the Jane McRae chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution erected a monument to Jane McRae, the young loyalist who was going to marry a British soldier. <laughs>